So, today we will begin a new topic on stocks and flows. The stocks and flows forms the, the central concept for this entire system dynamics uh, methodology and we will be spending most of our time uh, in this course worrying about the stocks and flows and trying to model them and using that construct to understand and model and simulate various systems. So, before that I would like to give a brief history of system dynamics methodology which some of you might find fascinating. This is one of those uh, rare approaches that has a definitive founder or a creator uh, who had developed this uh, methodology. So, the system dynamics methodology was developed by Professor J. W. Forrester uh, from MIT in the mid uh, 1950s. The interesting was Professor Forrester was a electrical engineer by training and he was even uh, participated and uh, headed the project on the whirlwind uh, project as it is called in the 1940s where he had helped develop the kind of a storage device which is a precursor to today's RAM. So, with that solid foundation in the mid 1950s when the Sloan school of management was started, he was invited to be on board and being a true you know, electrical engineer he told like I do not know nothing about management why am I being part of it. They just said ok you just come and see what you can do. So, being an uh, electrical engineer he had a good sound background in the areas of control theory. So, he thought ok let us see whether we can apply some of those concepts into management. So, he spent a year or two looking at various industrial processes and trying to map it in terms of a kind of a control theory kind of approach where we look at the state of the system and see what kind of things flow in and out and the result was this fascinating field of uh, system dynamics. So, what he did was to look at industrial systems where he identified various players within a supply chain. So, even at that time people were not even common in using the term supply chain kind of initiated and saying ok let us assume there are some uh, he went and studied some of it and ok there are the factories there are these uh, warehouses and there are these retailers and warehouses orders material to the factory factory produces them and after some time the material reaches the warehouse and even before ordering there are various sorts of delays that can occur and he systematically wrote them out as a set of equations, so, time difference equations or differential equations as you see it. And the end result was this interesting book on industrial dynamics which he came out in 1961. So, uh, where he actually identified the business structures, looked at the sales, inventory and order policy in a very systematic manner and looked at the business uh, what can I say the expanding effects of supply chain due to fluctuating uh, retailer demand. And this book now it is known as the Bullwhip effect, some of you might have heard of the Bullwhip effect, it has its origins right here in 1950s work of uh, Forrester. At that time he did not use the term Bullwhip effect, he just pointed out the fluctuations and very interesting and new to that period in time this book is full of illustrations it has full of computer generated uh, graphics to show how if an inventory changes what happens to dynamics upstream within the warehouse the retailers warehouse distributors as well as the factory uh, but to do that simulation remember we were 1950s and that is when computer objective set up each computer was probably as big as this room, there is probably handful of computers in the entire United States uh, and predominantly was used in the Manhattan project and stuff. So, MIT had one. So, he had approached the computer department and uh, I told hey I have set up these equations, but I cannot solve them they are you know getting highly nonlinear. So, can we actually try and simulate them? So, the computer department took it up as a challenge and built this uh, simple standing for simulation of industrial management problems using lot of equations that is what simple stands for. That was the very first attempt to move away from coding in the coding sense to bring it into a symbolic language because what we have on the upper and the top side is just a set of differential equations and using that symbolic structure we want to simulate the system. So, we do not 
So, that was the very first attempt to actually move away from coding into a use of a symbolic structure. So, that that can be used by others who are non coders. So, its foundation went way back in 1950 is almost the very first development of uh, and use of computers and this is probably one of the very early use of computer for other than military purposes. Uh, that has later developed later meaning within next decade itself it led to the development of what is called as dynamo standing for uh, dynamic models with a little more powerful uh, interface which does uh, based on symbolic input it could be used to uh, simulate uh, differential equations and uh, dynamic system that is what dynamic model means and this uh, spurred the development and use of computers by non programmers so that had a very very uh, interesting origins uh, so so it is not the it is not that the programming came first and then we went this in fact effort to develop uh, and use computer mo models for non programmers started way earlier than you might have known so when this industrial dynamics came there was very new we are looking at uh, unit management or industrial systems nobody has looked at the system as a, a set of equations that can be modeled that was kind of well received but soon the potential for this approach in other domains become apparent in the mid uh, entire 60s when uh, forrester had encounters with other colleagues in various departments as well as uh, in um, the administration. The result was in 69 he helped work on work on urban dynamics where he looked at more problem of cities and urban development where he was able to use the same system dynamics methodology to actually map and identify various variables uh, as stocks and flows uh, with underlying structure as being a differential equation uh, concepts and then in 71 he devel helped develop this world dynamics a model of of how the world population evolves, the energy needs, environment, etc., way, way back in 1971. Now, all these three were came out as nice big fat books. So, what it did, and then Forrester devoted rest of his life to the expansion, the education, as well as the use of uh, system dynamics methodology uh, for various societal problems, as well as uh, looking at complex issues and how to abstract them. So, all these work helped initiate this dialogue on whether how feasible the modeling of societal problem is still of course, it is an ongoing debate you may find people are either really into system dynamics to take it or they just dismiss it out out front saying no this is uh, this is still giving us a very uh, you know, still model there are still more complexities which you cannot capture it. So, it is still ongoing debate, but it all stems from uh, you know, Forrester's early argument where he is told that use of computerized system models which he believed in use of computerized system models to inform societal the social policy is far superior to simple debate both in generating insight into the root causes of the problem and in understanding the likely effects of proposed solutions way way back uh, in 1971 which uh, hopefully some of us will share the idea here being when we engage in come up with you know when we are looking at a social or a more complex socio economic kind of problem we need various viewpoints we cannot just sit in a room and just ideate on what will work. So, when we start to engage in dialogue it eventually leads into moves away from dialogue to discussion to uh, heated debates on various forefronts. So, what this can help bring to the table is as and when where viewpoints are presented we can try to map it out in a kind of nice causal kind of diagram. Uh, and identifying stocks and flows and then trying to see understand how the dynamics evolve over time yeah so that is a kind of nice uh, history of how system dynamics has evolved uh, when we started off with it started off directly by identifying the stocks and flows that we are going to see and only later people uh, told that you know jumping to stock and flow itself is quite difficult let us you know first uh, develop what we call as a causal mapping which led to the development of causal loop diagrams to identify what are the key variables in the system let us map out their interaction and then let us use that to move into stock flow diagram where once you start doing stock and flows we are already one step towards building a computer based model which you will see why in a minute because they are just visual representation 
of the underlying equation that you are trying to model and establish. Okay. So, and it is quite quite easy to teach. Use that takes time. Uh, yeah. So, still, uh, so MIT then the Sohan School of Management has a pretty strong group on the system dynamics uh, group. Still, the most of the activities are concentrated there. A fair bit of participation now from various uh, industries and countries uh, and applications from the government all the way to uh, uh, people wanting to just learn and understand the systems on an individual level. Um, various nice things that has happened over time. People have then used the model to help predict uh, the very classical book by Meadows on uh, limits to growth, which actually points out how. No, that was a time remember in 60s things was all great it was fantastic there is no in fact there is no limits to growth at that point in time when this in a book on based on system dynamics ideologies methodologies came about talking about that there is going to be limits to growth and then that started unfolding in the 70s and 80s uh, 1980s system dynamics methodology was used in a supreme court uh, or maybe a district court i don't know some legal hearings uh, between a customer and uh, and the uh, government saying that um, meaning the client was telling the telling that the delays in the project was due to the interference by the government because of changing requirements government was trying to sue the company saying that you delayed the project unnecessarily so i am not going to pay you the full money but the system dynamics model uh, was used to understand actual dynamics between the government as well as the company and it was uh, found that there was excessive interference in the government which caused the delays and the, the ruling was had used this uh, system dynamic methodology. So, that is quite you know how often you hear that actual math is used in court case rulings. So, uh, it was uh, quite interesting and more recently uh, the I do not know how much of you are following the debates and discussions on climate change. There is this conference of parties, and uh, uh, one of one climate change model has been adopted by all the countries. Uh, so, uh, so this model is be has been developed based on system dynamics methodology. The underlying model or the system dynamics model, which has been adopted as one of the most accurate models to represent what can happen in climate change and what are the um, potential pathways. That it predicts uh, based on our uh, current consumption and usage patterns of various fuels, etc., and economies and stuff like that. So, uh, it's called Sea Roads Climate uh, Road Map. So, you have to look it up. So, uh, there are a lot of interesting and very high level applications that is coming out uh, of this process. 